a two. Um, I just realized too, um, I misspoke a little bit. So with this, it's not it wasn't necessarily electricity that was flowing through it. It was a cathode ray. Essentially what happened, and this is just one picture of the apparatus, um, electricity kind of went through two different parts, the positive and the negative end, and that produced the cathode ray, which is this part. So I misspoke a little bit. It wasn't necessarily electricity, but it was charged particles. And they didn't know which way it was charged. This is how they figured out it was negative charge with electrons. So I just want to get that out. My bad for that. Um, I kind of paused the video and was like, why did I say that? I also want to fix that really quickly. Well, we left out, off on this one thing about there being a positive thing to go with a negative. If everything was negative, everything would repel, nothing would be together. Done. We wouldn't exist. Plain. So here's what they came up with. Um, one of the important parts to realize, though, is J.J. Thompson, through his idea, he thought that the way atoms worked was you would have these negative little pieces, which are blue here, surrounded by what he thought was just the space of positivity. So everything that's kind of this brownish color would be a positive, like almost ooze. And he called this the plum pudding model. Literally think a bunch of like green jello with grapes in the middle. That's what he thought atoms looked like. But the positive jello was surrounding these grapes, which would be negative. Literally what he thought. So when Ernest Rutherford was trying to figure out if this is right, he did his famous gold foil experiment. Essentially, he had a way to shoot alpha particles at a piece of gold foil. And if this was right, again, imagine poking your finger through like some green jello. Easy, right? He thought all of the particles would just go straight through the foil. And this ring here was a detector. So everything on the circle could detect where they were going. So he thought, okay, it's only going to hit here. Particles are all going to go straight through. That didn't happen. What ended up happening is the second it hit this foil, a bunch went through. Don't get me wrong, because atoms are mostly open space, as you can see from this drawing. But some bounced. And a few bounced severely off. This one went backwards. This one went backwards. And you can see there's a little bit of a spray towards the straight end. This told him a few things. One, alpha particles are positive, which means that whatever he was going through here had to be positive as well. Because if this foil part was positive and the, um, the alpha particles were negative, they would stick together. Nothing would have charged. Nothing would have registered any kind of signatures. But they did. So when that particle was positive and positive, repelling away from each other. And as you know, this is a pretty small area. Um, and again, that's where he came up with this idea of protons. And it's pretty cool. And again, he knew that, again, most of them are going straight through. So just like this model, right, where you're used to seeing the electrons around the outside, mostly empty space with the electrons. So the arrows go straight through. There are a few reflections of that. This meant that the nucleus is small, positive because it's reflecting these being protons and this being positive too, they're going to repel. And that's the nucleus is the mass part because this doesn't have it. What happened there? With neutrons, James Chadwick in 1932, was able to deduce that with a little bit more complicated experiment, 30, uh, sorry, 21 year difference. Essentially, he shot the same alpha particles at some beryllium lithium boron foil. This had questionable results because he didn't know what this was yet, but he ran through some paraffin, which is a fancy, fancy word. And I'm sorry that this is not spelling very nicely for me right now, wax. Um, so as bad as that looks, it is wax. And this actually bumped out protons. They were able to measure that with the counter with radiation. So whatever this was said that, well, one, not charged because it wasn't picking this up here. It's the same size as a neutron because if not, how could a neutron get a proton to jump off like that? And that it was neutral because they didn't know this. Neutrons, neutral. And that's the end of this part of the video.